I've been down here on the Columbia for the past uh, it's about my seventh day now that I've been down here and I've been fishing and uh, I got asked in general just like what it, what am I doing what am I using I'm not trying to say mine's the best or anything like that but I feel more people that are wanting to try to fish are kind of like uh, what do I do how do I get started this is that kind of thing uh, if you guys can give pointers or tips uh, when I do these little tutorials this is what it's for it's for people that, uh, that don't know uh, or maybe they want to try to catch something else that they can add to their repertoire of anything else so uh, what I'm gonna do is just go over so uh, if people have a question or maybe want to learn something this is something that you can look at doing I see things backwards so when I watch someone do something I learn left-handed so um, one of the things my tying might be backwards looking it might be uh, anything I do might be somewhat weird or awkward but it's just because that's the way I learn when I see things it's twisted around so uh, <laughs> if it's backwards to you that's why so um, all right so we're gonna start off with just our leader tying our hook uh, I get asked about this frequently. Uh, I think it's just more river talk, I think. So um, I think it's just everybody, how we all talk, what leader, what long, or all the length. And my length is always probably about my shoulder width. That's how I always do it. I always say that it's always okay to make more or too much, and then you can cut it off. One thing too is that I always tell everybody too when you're first starting out or even when you're still fishing all the time is always have your clippers around your neck all the time because the amount of tying uh, of everything the amount of tying that goes into this is just like it's relentless so uh, especially when you're running the, as many poles as we are running so the first thing I'll do is that's what I'll do is do my leader somewhat around my shoulder length is kind of what I go for that's about my, how much so what I'm gonna do is be doing, I'm tying double hooks down here. So I get asked about tying double hooks. So basically you're just gonna put it through the eye and then you're gonna run it around the eye. Uh, sometimes people will be like, oh, six times or whatever. I don't know, I do it to about midway. You're then gonna, sorry, I go so, I do it so fast that sometimes I'm just, I need to go slower. So you'll put your finger up and then you'll go around and you can always use your other fingers to like to pick up the slack or anything like that so you'll go around your finger and back right where you started from right there so you're gonna have your circle then you're gonna grab it with your middle finger and then run it through and around like that I'm more geared up to trying to show my setup instead of like do a tutorial hook tying so I'll try to stick to that. I'll go around it about six or seven times and then tie it off. See that. Always leave extra so when you cinch things or you tighten things, you always have to have that extra. You always have to have that extra in case when the fish bites it that your knots don't come undone. So now, now I'll run it back through the eye and then I'll have my first tie. Now what we're going to do our second tie the same way, but you're going to have to go over the first hook. So we'll bring it down through the eye. And I always match it up. I always match it up right at the end. So that way you don't, when you have that, that trailer that comes around, if it's way out there, it flings around and hooks on everything and it makes a mess. So try to keep everything compact as possible. Go back around the eye. I always go halfway. If you, whatever way you want to do it, that's cool. And then I do. I always will make it really tight and snug. Like, so what I'll do is on the second hook, I'll bring it down and make it. See how it's starting to like just relax on top of the other one. Until right, I said that, and then I'll just. Hmm. have some issues I guess just trying to sometimes I feel like it's, it's not showing off but sometimes I feel like that's that's what I'm doing so 
so that's why it happens. Just weird things happen like that. Okay, so there's my double hook, as you can see. Now, my go getter, the go to, of course, is the quirky at the end, and my cheater, my green with polka dots. The other one would be white with pink polka dots with pink wings. That one's been knocking them too. Uh, what's the other one? There's, oh, pink is the other color that's really been hitting hard too. So now, the common thing is, is that everybody's asking, now I'm not saying this is the best way, this is just stuff that I'm trying to do to eliminate error, time screwing around out of the water. So <clears throat> a lot of people are saying, well, my line gets all screwy, and then when I cast in, it goes, Whoa, does something like that, right? So one of the ways I always try to do is, is take a snap swivel, and then I try to put it at the end to eliminate that, work the shot. So then, you know, like, let's say <clears throat> the fish aren't biting, and like, I don't want to go check the poles, I just want to leave them out there. Well, this will hopefully, the, the whole, the goal of it is to let it spin without a given light or eventually it starts wrapping itself up. So the longer it sits on the water, it wraps itself up more. Same way with your, your anchor. Well, I call it your anchors, but your weight. I have a different dialogue too. So sometimes it, 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 <laughs> it causes a, I don't know, not a problem, but it just communication. So then, now the other thing is too, is that when you get your swivels, don't get those barrel swivels that are like, uh, I would say left or right, uh, I don't know, dominant, whatever the words is. If you guys know what it is, help me out. But where they are like that, I don't like those. They don't, they're not, uh, I don't feel these like these ones, these ones move around more. So I'll put my snap swivel on my three way now it's been so windy out here, I had to tie my line down so I didn't lose it. So that's what this is all about. One thing too is, is that I want to go over real quick too is that uh, I have my hammer is this, I don't know, Fiskars, Fiskars, whatever it is. This thing is a beast. So when you're, when even when you're putting in nails, big nails for your scaffolds or you're, you're hammering your your poles in this thing is the go-to it's really I feel like it's not unbreakable because I just run over it and anyways but I wanted to give a, a shout out to this because I really like that that's so sitting there with a little hammer ping 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 get it done in two hits or whatever all right back to what I was doing get sidetracked so here's my three-way and I just do a fisherman knot on it let's go I kind of exaggerate so maybe six or seven times whatever and then I'll run it through and then the top and then I'll tighten it so remember then sometimes it's easier to cinch it kind of pull it down too so there's what I'm starting to, my setup starting to look like now I always well like I said I always leave the little excess there because when a fish hits it or you get hung up you don't want your knot slipping out and unless it's something you you don't want, of course, or you want to let go, but in this case we don't, so we don't want to let it go. Now, the thing is where I'm fishing is it's there's a hole, there's a big ledge, and then it goes really shallow to maybe about three or four feet, and they're hitting actually in the hole, and they're hitting in the shallow part too. Now, in the shallow part, I'll have a really short a short leader. And I don't really go too crazy on the leader, the lead. I'd rather lose my weight than, than lose my setup. So I'll just do about three or four times as a fisherman's knot. Now, if I'm fishing in the the shallower part, my leader is only going to be about like that big for my weight. But if I'm kind of fishing on that ledge, I kind of give it a little more because I want it off of there. So I always just adapt to whatever you're fishing, however you're fishing. So then I'll take, try to take my weight. Slipped right out of my hand. And then I'll add it to my three way. I only do it about three or four times too, so. So then this is what it's gonna look like when it's sitting, sitting on the bottom and how high. 
Now, one of the things too is everybody says, oh, this one's red and yellow, or this one's brown and black, or whatever, purple and whatever the other mixture colors are. Now, when you do that, like the watermelon one, and you blow on it, and you get it going, you're gonna see that it doesn't, it's not the colors that you're looking at. It mixes in, and mi mixes them in and comes a different color. So it's kind of, uh, kind of interesting. It, they, so when you're looking at colors, think of that too. That's one thing when you're picking them out. Now, the other thing is, is that I always prefer the magic thread. Uh, it's easy to break off and do your tuna balls with. And then of course your spawning net to make your tuna balls. And what your tuna balls will look like is just little guys like that to put on your what we're gonna do is put on our trailer i always find putting it on my trailer easy or so we'll have it that way some people will put them in the egg loop uh underneath it like that this sinker has a mind of its own I swear. so some people will put them in their egg loop uh, that's fine however i just prefer to do mine through the tuna ball itself Easier and trying to get it off the bar because it's harder. Okay, so there's our setup. There's our tuna ball setup. Um, like that. That's what I'm running. This is how I do it. Okay? And the the one thing I like to use is the tuna tuna blood. I really enjoy using that because I feel like it gets bigger hits. So this is my setup. This is what I do. What I use, uh, I might have a little couple tricks in there that you might not know. Maybe you don't. Maybe it's all the same thing you do, but a little different. So, but anyways, I wanted to take that time out to. Uh, since it's so windy too, I use an orange to put my hooks in because anything else I'm seeing to put it in, it blows off and it's flying down the, the Columbia. So this is weighted down, and this is how I keep my hooks for now, anyways. So. Here you guys go, Fit, plunking on the Columbia with your cheaters. Fish on, brothers, sisters. All right. Tonight I'm here with my my fellow fisherman, my good buddy Isaiah. And what we're gonna do tonight is show you guys how he ties hooks here on the Columbia River. So go ahead, Isaiah. Show us what you do when you're plunking down here on the Columbia River. <coughs> All right, first you want to grab about about two, two feet of line. Then you grab your scissors or whatever you got, cut it. And then grab your one hook, go from the top of the eye. Make sure you got uh, some line facing off of your hook right here. Go around six times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Then you want to go around seven or six more times. One, two, three, four, five. Six. Then you pull it. Then once you're done with the single hook, you go with your second hook. Go from the bottom of the eye this time. And then you take it all the way down from the line. Then wherever you want it, you put it right there. And then you're going to tie it. You're going to go around seven times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Then you're going to grab this and go from the bottom of the eye. You don't want to pull it all the way through either, so leave it, leave some slack. 
go around six six times this time. One, two, three, four, five, six. Pull it through again. Then grab it. Then when you tighten it, you grab it from the bottom hook so you you're not slipping and you hook yourself. Tighten it. And then with your weight, you're gonna. You're not gonna grab much line like you did with your hook. Then you're gonna cut it. Go around seven times. Put it through the bottom of the eye. Then when you tighten it, you grab the top right here. Pull it down. Pull it really tight and then you come over to your swivel, your three-way swivel. Go through, then you wrap it around seven or six times. One, two, three, four, five, six. Tighten it and then you. We don't got no cheaters. I'll grab you a cheater. Go ahead and uh, hook it onto your pole. Show everybody how you're going to do that. Then, with your weight or whatever, you should have something like that. First, you're gonna want to put your little porky on first. That way, your cheater don't go against your hooks and you don't, you don't spin. So once you got that on, you put your cheater on. Then that's what it should look like. Put it on your other, your other eye of your swivel. Then you can adjust it to where you want it. Look, you want the weight shorter than your line, than your line of your hook. Why do we want our weight shorter? Because when your weight shorter, um, your hook has more line to start fishing a little bit more. And what do you what do you mean by fishing? Um. So when your weight is shorter than your... I'll let you go ahead and finish tying that and then I'll we'll come back to that question, okay? Okay. So just finish tying it and then we'll come back to explaining what fishing means. Then you go around seven times. this one to tighten it more and then once you think it's good you pull it down with your fingernails to tighten it. 
Okay, so explain to when it lands what it means by fishing. Don't don't set it down yet. We're not done. It's almost done. All right. So now show us what it looks like as it's going to be fishing in the water. <clears throat> when it hits the water, your weight goes down first. That way, when your cheater goes down, it follows the weight. And then, like it doesn't, like your cheater goes in the water first, it'll probably. You have to round the line a little bit. So with the weight gets shorter, that hits the water first, so it doesn't. Okay, lift up the cheater so we can see what it looks like for fishing. So there you go. That's what it will like. Stretch it out, and then there we go. Isaiah will be fishing. All right, that concludes me and Isaiah's day at the river. We linked up for the second time this year already to get together to fish. So. Thank you for watching everybody.